Hey guys, it's Nina, and today I'm here with my mm, March, March <laughs> wrap-up. I forgot what month it was. So, in the month of March, I have read one poetry collection, three novels, and three graphic novels. There's some stats for you. I realized that some booktubers do that, and I was like, that's a good idea. So I started doing that, um... This is the first and, like, only ever poetry collection I've ever read, and I don't really have much stats to give you on many wrap-ups, so I don't know if this is the thing that I'm going to continue to do, but that's what I did today for you. <laughs> um, so let's jump into it. So the poetry collection that I read was a huge booktube hit, and that was Milk and Honey by Rupi Carr. I really don't know how you say this. So this poetry collection it kind of deals with love and abuse and all that. And it's divided into four different chapters. It's like, um, one's the hurting, the healing, the everything. Like, it, I don't, I don't remember the chapters, but yeah. And it comes with some nice, Mm, what do you call these sketches nice little sketches a lot of them are really beautiful sketches um oh like this one I really loved this sketch it's a woman and she's like a tree and I don't know but I feel like that for the most part I might get hate for this I feel like it was very tumblr I feel like if I was back in my 16 year old stage I could have written half of this now I'm not like aware of poetry things so I don't know the stanzas and how to write it in a poetry format but the things that she says is very teenage like um there was quite a few that I thought were really beautiful and I really love the ones that she's saying like it's our body we don't have to shave because I totally support that if you haven't checked out my other channel I have a video up and it's about not shaving. I didn't shave for five months and I mean it was very freeing for me I guess. Um, overall I didn't I didn't love this book. I didn't go crazy over it but it was refreshing. It was nice and yeah. Moving on to the novels I have The Accident Season. I'm gonna stop pronouncing names because I don't know how you say this. This took me forever. March reading kind of sucked. Um, this was the first book I read in March and it took me like two weeks. It was very slow for me. I just was in a slump. It wasn't that the book itself was bad. It was just I was not in the reading mood, I guess. Um, this was also pretty big on booktube, but it had a different cover. Like most of the booktubers I saw read this had a different cover. She was like falling from the sky or something. I mean, I don't know. This is about like every August or something her family has the accident seasons where they're prone to harmful accidents and like somebody breaks an arm, somebody breaks a face, I don't know. And then on the worst one somebody dies. And so we're going through an accident season with her and her siblings and she keeps seeing this girl Elsie and it's kind of like Elsie's a ghost. Um, you kind of feel, you get that feeling, that creepy feeling. I definitely recommend this for October reads. It wasn't my favorite book. I mean, I wasn't really that into it, and I felt like it took a while to get where we were going. Um, like three stars out of five. We have We Should Hang Out Sometime, an embarrassingly true story by Josh Sundquist. I really can't pronounce names. Anyway, this book was also kind of boring, in my opinion. Um, it goes through this guy's life and he's never he's like 20 something years old and he's never had a girlfriend and it goes through all the girls he's had crushes on and why it didn't work out and then years later he confronts the girls and kind of asks like why didn't this work why didn't we date what happened and I mean it was an interesting concept but I feel like there was no real like plot there's no real interesting boom um I did I felt like he was funny um, I felt like he self-sabotaged a lot, um, which I can relate to. And, um, that's really it. The one interesting thing was, uh, that made this kind of unique was that he only has one leg. So he lost his leg when he was young, 
um, to cancer. So he's a cancer survivor, and I thought that was really strong. But he's very insecure about that, and the whole book really focuses on that. So, I mean, it's an interesting take, especially since it's true. Like, this, this author actually went through all of this. But, I mean, it wasn't something that really captured me and sucked me in. Next book is one that I actually did enjoy this March, and that's Scythe by Neil Schusterman. Oh my god, I pronounced something right. Anyway, this book was big on booktube too. Um, my library had it, and they just got the second one, so I'm hoping to read that. This was huge um, for me. I really loved this story. It is about, uh, like, mm, very futuristic. It's in the future when humans overcome natural death and you no one really dies unless they are killed by a scythe and a scythe selects there's many scythes and they select who dies because you can't have overpopulation and whatever so people have to die eventually but they don't die natural deaths and so we have two contestants competing for the scythe them and uh, a lot of shit goes down, and I don't know. I don't, I'm don't. i terrible at explaining books. This was really good, though. I give it four and a half stars out of five. I definitely recommend this to you. <sighs> Water break. <clears throat> have the altered history of Willow Sparks. So as you can see, we're going to graphic novels. I wish this had some color. It's all like this blue, white, and black coloring. Um, the story itself, it was cute. I feel like it was definitely, like, I feel like it was more juvenile for me than it, I thought it was going to be. Um, but that didn't stop me from reading it. I still enjoyed it. This girl finds, like, these magic books, and she can write anything in the book, and it comes true. But it drives her away from her best friend because, you know, you shouldn't be able to change your life and stuff like that. I don't know. It was a good kind of moral life lesson, um... I don't know what else to say about it. I liked it. I give it a three and a half out of five. Then we have The Undertaking of Lily Chen. This was super boring. It did have color, um, which was a plus, but I felt like it was stupid. Um, this brother, okay, the main character's brother dies and he's unmarried, so they feel like he's alone in the afterlife. We have to get him a wife. So they try and bury a, a body for him, a, a woman that just died. But instead of doing that, they find this gorgeous woman who is alive. So they plan to kill her and bury her with his brother so that they can be husband and wife in the afterlife and he won't be alone. Um, pretty stupid. Um, I didn't like this. Like, I can, un I can understand, like... If you're, like, culture views that, like, you, you'd be alone in the afterlife, I get that. But I felt like the characters in this were stupid. Does that make sense? Snow Shadow. Um, this is about a boy goes into this haunted house. Again, I wish I had color, but it didn't really take away from the story for me. So this was one that I enjoyed, even though it didn't have color. Um, boy goes into a haunted house, meets ghosts, fall in love with ghosts. He doesn't have a shadow. He's, like, that's what it means about Cast No Shadow. Like, he doesn't have a shadow like everybody else. And I I don't really remember. It was an okay book. So, like, three stars, maybe 3.25. I don't know. It was okay. All that I read in March. I hope you have a wonderful day. Let me know in the comments about what you think about some of these books or what you read in March, what I should read in April. And, yeah. Okay, bye!